Hello everyone, Happy New Year and Clear Sky. Welcome back to my channel Galaxy Art Media. Last year in December, I decided to buy a ZW adapter for Nikon lenses. And you can see it here, I have this adapter attached to a Nikon lens, a 40mm f2.8 and to my ZW224 MC planetary camera. You also need a dovetail and a mounting ring. I bought this small dovetail with two mounting rings. I have uh, taken the secondary mounting ring from the dovetail and I use it like this. I placed here the camera, use the screws here to fix it in place. Be sure you tight good the screws so it will be fixed. And after you connected your camera to the adapter, to the lens, normally you should be able to start doing a photography. The problem is that this adapter is made for lenses that have an aperture ring. It's a small mechanism here that will allow you to control the aperture from your lens. If your lens will not have an aperture ring, then you'll have a problem using this adapter with a lens like this that does not have an aperture ring. And here we have one, the Nikkor 40mm and it does not have any way to control the aperture from the lens. When I first tested this adapter with the 40mm lens and the ZW camera, I did not know that the aperture will be closed. It was cloudy outside so I just made the test through the window and uh, filmed the town. Playing with the exposure settings I've noticed that the image was much darker. So I said something must be wrong because I was I should have been at f2.8 I needed like 5 to 8 seconds to be able to see anything. That is a longer exposure time that I usually needed even with a DSLR camera. So I've noticed that is something wrong, so I've checked to see the aperture here inside the lens and the aperture was actually close. So it was at the higher F number and you won't be able to image using the aperture wide open. This is a big problem. So in order to fix this, I decided to make a small spacer adapter to place inside the lens to hold the aperture open. I will show you this in a moment. I will take down the lens from the camera. First I will start and press this small button here. And now I will be able to remove the lens. This is exactly how you use it with a DSLR camera. So we have the lens here. And here is the adapter connected to the camera. In the small box you do have also some spacers that I did not need it at the moment. These spacers can help you in other situations like if you want to use a reducer corrector with an astrophotography camera and they can help you also to change the position of your astrophotography camera when you rotate the camera into an adapter. When using the 40mm lens I did not need any spacers to be able to focus, however with the telephoto lens I needed a small T2 extension ring to be able to obtain focus with the Tamron 70-300mm lens. This is the adapter and it's very easy to use. And I'll place here a light pollution filter. Uh, USCS Nebula filter. So you see here it has a thread for 2 inch filters and it's very easy to, to mount one. And I've tightened now the second part of the adapter and you can see here we have now a filter inside. You can use a measurement tool like this one, it's called in Romania Schubler and I believe in English it's called calipers. And you can use it to measure here the distance that is needed uh, from this small mechanism here at uh, inside the lens to be able to hold the aperture open. And I measured it, it was like 4 millimeters. I've uh, cut it from the wood stick, it was 4 millimeters and it was a little bit too much. So I used this sandpaper to rub it and make it just a little bit smaller, so I think it's about 3.9 millimeters, and this was enough to hold the aperture of the lens wide open. 
And if you want to remove it, here you can use this tweezer. Uh, you can grab it and remove it. And I'll place it here. So the size that I've made is about 3.9 millimeters with 6 and 2 millimeters thickness. It fits very good here and it will hold the aperture open. And you can make also another one, let's say if you do not want to image with the aperture wide open, you can make a little bit smaller and then you'll probably image around F4. Well, it will depend on how small this adapter it will be. These are a few ways to control the aperture in this situation. Or you can also use here in front of the lens some step down rings. So you place, you can place a step down ring here and another on top. And this is another way that you can uh, reduce the aperture. This astrophotography camera, the 224MC, is not ideal for this lens because it's very undersampled. And also having this small sensor with a narrow field of view. Uh, it will be more visible the lack of details because it's like cropping into a larger image if we compare with the field of view that we have with a DSLR camera. So a uh, lens with higher focal length will be better uh, with this camera because we will be able to capture more details. Also you'll have better results with a camera that has a larger sensor because you'll be able to capture more sky and if you'll Still be undersampled, it will not be so noticeable compared with a camera with very small sensor size. Now let's continue and I will attach the Tamron lens to the ZW adapter. It seems it does not want to enter here. Okay, let's try again. I need to make it a little bit thinner. So another problem that you might encounter. Here the size is different a little bit than with the other one, so we need to make, make it thinner a little bit. So we will use we will use this sandpaper here and make it a little bit thinner. Okay, so we've done this step and now it should be a little bit thinner. Make sure you clean this uh, small spacer after. Okay, and now we will try again. And now it it fits. So I made it six millimeters. It's good because it's just one millimeter above here. So I think. Probably I should have made it like seven millimeters. You should make it at least six millimeters long. Let's check. The aperture is wide open. We see here we have a small dot here, uh, a small line and a small dot here inside the adapter. And we will align these dots like this. Okay. And now we will just turn until we hear a small sound like this. And we have attached the adapter to the lens. Now the second part is to attach the camera. Now we must be careful here because we do have small space from the lens to the dovetail. And for this reason I did uh, mounted the lens a little bit higher, so we do have an, enough space to connect the camera. For the moment I will press here on this small button and I will take it out because it's better to connect it first here on the astrophotographic camera. We will try to connect it like this. Okay. I suggest you connect first the adapter to the astrophotographic camera because it's easier without the lens and then the lens should not be hard to attach it directly to the adapter. We will align these two points that is here. Okay, and now we turn. And we have the click. And now 
with attach the lens. You can use also zoom lenses or prime lenses. Prime lenses will give you better uh, image quality. So now we are ready to mount this camera lens with a ZW astrophotography camera on a tripod or on a star tracker. Like you see here, the Star Adventurer 2i. I want to show you how to mount it on a tripod. And we have a mini tripod here. And it has here a small mounting plate. So I will just place this small mounting plate with one four uh, screw. Okay. And I will use this coin here to tighten it. And now we can attach it on a tripod. So uh, this is a small ball head. So I think this is the position. Yeah, so we need to release it first. And uh, then we tight. Okay, so now I place it on the tripod. And if you use it like this, you can do untracked astrophotography. So you need to go with short exposures, like one second or less, depending on the focal length. So it's 70 millimeters. It might go a few seconds, three or four. And you can do also live stack using uh, software like SharpCap. So you'll connect the camera to the laptop and you'll be able to capture the sky while doing electronic assisted astronomy. You'll be able to see the nebula on your screen. I have here the Star Adventurer and I'll bring now the lens with my ZW camera. I'll use this small hole and mount it here. Then I will tighten it here on the declination bracket. So we've already mounted. Now we need to check balance and I will release here the declination bracket and see if it is balanced. So it is a little bit heavier on, uh, still on the lens part, but not too much. So I think you still can get good results with this setup. If you are using a heavier lens than uh, this one, then you need a longer dovetail bar to be able to balance properly in declination. Okay, so now we notice it's not perfect balance in declination, but I believe it's good enough to get some nice results with the Star Adventurer 2i. And now we need also to check in light ascension. And we will release the clutch and try to balance it. Okay, so we release the clutch and it's too heavy on the camera side and we will move the counterweight a little bit okay and you see now it's balanced thank you for watching i do hope you find this video useful if you did please subscribe if you didn't already and i wish you a happy new year with clear sky joy and happiness